but when it comes to pressure, everybody crumble. Why am I able to receive the remarks that I do? Did you know that Damir's elimination made a whole lot of people want to boycott the show's finale altogether? Yeah, and that's just one of the times when Chef Ramsay made unfair decisions during his eliminations. Have really impressed me. Your energy, your passion is evidence. Okay, give me a minute or two to harp on the Damir situation for a second. Try this complaint on for size. I've been watching these shows for years. I've seen wrong picks from Gordon. This was at the top. Damir's elimination has stirred up a controversy the likes of which hasn't been seen since Nick's. When you need help, delegate. Please give me your jacket. Yes, chef. Listen carefully. Yeah, it's that huge. People are upset and enraged, and I definitely don't blame them. Some even called the entire process rigged. And while I don't want to go that far as a first instinct, I think everyone can agree that he deserved a second chance. Though, I'm curious, what was the most unfair elimination on Hell's Kitchen according to you? If you're not sure, I'll be happy to give you a few examples. In what's been dubbed the biggest robbery in the show's history, Hell's Kitchen All-Stars threw everyone a hell of a curveball with its first ever three-way finale. And leading the pack was this contestant, who was the clear fan favorite. I'd always deserve a red carpet. Not only did he undergo a remarkable transformation since season 14, ditching his bitchy attitude and winning hearts along the way, but he also showed incredible growth in the cooking department too. In fact, he stood out as the most improved all-star among the talented bunch. You better not fucking put me out, you little bitch. I'll That's Nick Peters' bond for you, and fans are convinced the show did him dirty when he got eliminated in season 17. I think Michelle Tribble summed it up perfectly when she introduced him while picking her brigade for the finale. She said, All through the season, they were the best competitor in all the challenges and dinner. Nick, please. Even Chef Ramsay himself acknowledged his talent, dubbing him the most improved all-star of the season and selecting him as the first finalist. And coming from Chef Ramsay, that's no small compliment. Invited back. What have you been doing? <laughs> everything, Chef. I've been trying to learn everything. Yeah, yeah. himself couldn't believe his ears when he heard it. That, that, that means the world, you know? I'll even admit it. Like, I think I'm a a three-way finale between him, Benjamin, and Michelle was the last thing anyone saw coming. The whole episode had everyone on the edge of their seats, wondering how it would all go down. Would there be three separate kitchens? Three doors? And how on earth would they form the teams? Fans were dying to know. But here's the kicker, the penultimate episode wasn't about to provide anyone any answers. They turned the final tasting challenge into an elimination challenge. Well, who would have guessed? But Nick stayed sure of himself. No pork touching, none of the entrees. Oh my god. Unfortunately, the episode didn't quite live up to the hype. Things got super tense when it came down to the tiebreaker, and the final judge, Mark Fasora, the big boss at Caesars Entertainment, had to announce the last two. And just like that, BAM! He dropped the bomb. Benjamin. Benjamin! Which meant Nick was out. Can you believe it? Fans went absolutely nuts almost instantly, and a wild rumor started spreading like wildfire. Some folks were saying that Mark intentionally asked Nick because he didn't want an LGBT head chef. That rumor is just plain ridiculous and baseless. We've had fantastic LGBT chefs like Christina, Heather, and Latasha who've rocked it on the show. So let's nip that rumor in the bud right now, shall we? But yeah, it's pretty frustrating to see Nick's destiny decided by a hotel executive rather than a seasoned pro-level chef. Do you reckon Chef Ramsay was on board with that call? Well, the survey says probably not. Take this Redditor WonderKid RY93, for example. They couldn't help but notice that season 17 seemed more like a rating stunt and lacked any real stakes. According to them, everything was likely decided beforehand. And why? Well, a series of downright awful decisions, apparently. Ben, Ashley, Giovanni, Van, Dana, and Nick, these talented chefs were shown the door way too soon. They were skilled and reliable, but one slip up or a bad service, and they were out. Meanwhile, drama queens like Elise, Barbie, and Robin seem to get chance after chance after chance. So basically, this Redditor thinks season 17 was all about theatrics and didn't care about giving deserving chefs a fair shot, which is why they stopped watching the show altogether. It's interesting to hear Benjamin Knack's take on Nick's elimination. He admitted it was pretty harsh and praised Nick for his skills in the kitchen, his performance in challenges, and his interactions with others. Plus, he added that Nick is the funniest person he knows. I can see where he's coming from. Anyway, it's heartwarming to see Nick enjoying life with his husband and daughter. Really believed in my menu and such is life. Here we are, sitting on my couch after the kitchen, out of a pot, but... <laughs> well, I can only wish him all the best. 
And while we're talking about Season 17, let's give Giovanni Filippone the spotlight he deserves. Seriously, this guy was seriously underrated, especially in Season 5 and Season 17. Back in Season 5, Giovanni was like the unsung hero of the Red Team. I'm one out on a, on a land. Sure, his final service hit a few bumps, but let's be real here, he had just one bad service before that. And get this, he wasn't even nominated when he was on the blue team. And I plan on winning this thing, and I plan on beating whoever's in front of me. I'm coming out of this thing a lot. But his elimination in the Cook for Your Life challenge was absolutely unfair. Giovanni was penalized for having too much pasta, but Barbie, who was literally in the exact same boat, got a pass. And let's not forget about the salty oysters and the oyster destroyer herself, Robin. It's like they were playing by different rules or something. Although Giovanni had too much pasta in his dish, he served all six orders. Meanwhile, Millie forgot one order, Elise had salty oysters, and Robin messed up three oysters. And what happens? Giovanni gets the boot. Seriously, who complains about extra food? Yeah, it's tough to admit, but sometimes contestants get eliminated simply because they're seen as boring. And while Nick and Gio may be at the top of this list of most Rob contestants, this one here isn't far behind. Jamie, you're done. Check it off. I can't any further with you. I'm getting... No the producers probably wanted more from the Elise Carey dynamic, which led to Jamie Gregorich's elimination in Season 9. She wasn't even nominated for the eliminations. Apparently, Chef Ramsay saw that her heart just wasn't as in it as he would have liked. And just like that, she was sent packing. No response. Good night. Bye, Jamie. This left not only the audience, but even Jamie dejected. One of the best chefs in the world that I didn't have what it took to stay here. It hurts deep. It is tough to swallow my pride and walk out those doors. <laughs> One of the hardest things I ever had to do. Jamie's gone. I mean, that's just not fair. She wasn't even allowed to defend herself. Worse and worse and worse. Let that be a lesson. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. At the end of the day, I'm a way better chef than- She later took to Twitter to confess that she didn't engage much in all the drama because she chose to show class instead. You know, like a professional executive chef. Shame Chef Ramsay wasn't in the market for one of those. Anyway, she's doing great and is happily engaged to her girlfriend, Caitlin. In the same vein, let's not forget Season 16. When it came to the blue team, skill and personality were seriously lacking. But man, nothing left me shaking my head like this one particular elimination. Listen carefully. Yes, chef. Clearly, Aaron was the only one holding it together on that team, wasn't he? His elimination felt like it was just for the sake of TV drama. And don't even get me started on Andrew, Devin, and Johnny. They were like a train wreck in that service, weren't they? Devin's cold garnish and Johnny's raw salmon as Chef Ram slightly perturbed. Those three guys were making tons of mistakes, but they were also providing some juicy drama for the show. Johnny became the season's bad guy after his thing with Kimberly, and Andrew and Devin were constantly clashing. But let's be real, conflicts make for good TV, so they weren't getting kicked out anytime soon. Aaron had a solid service with no mistakes, but it seems like the drama overshadowed that. If I were Chef Ramsay, I'd have thought about moving Aaron to the red team and saying goodbye to Mr. I love making women cry, Johnny. Being on a team that appreciated him might have boosted his morale and performance. The supportive atmosphere on the red team could have encouraged Aaron to communicate better and become more confident, unlike the toxic environment on the blue team. Then Matt, who fancied himself an expert, convinced everyone to nominate Aaron for elimination. You know what I've seen? I definitely think Aaron's the one here. I'm looking in the future, guys. Like what? In what way, Matt? Now, while I think Aaron must have been transferred to the red team, here's someone who shouldn't have. Give me your jacket. Yes, chef. Miss Duff. Tonight was your worst performance in this. Hassan Musulmani. In season 15 of Hell's Kitchen, there wasn't a soul watching that was baffled by his elimination. He was a standout chef, no question. Okay, he had one slip up during a dinner service, but come on, compared to others who messed up repeatedly, Hassan's mistake was minor. Hassan's elimination, instead of someone like Jackie, felt like a curveball from Chef Ramsay. Apart from his cooking skills, what made Hassan stand out was his sheer awesomeness. The guy was downright funny. But then, during the fourth service, Hassan, stationed at the appetizers alongside Joe, showed his team player spirit by lending a hand to Kevin on the meat station. Sauce awesome in the boat, come on, fast, fast, fast! My main focus in tonight's day. Hassan's strategic move paid off big time. With the men's entree sailing smoothly out of the kitchen, his vocal leadership and clear direction really shone through. I got two sauce going to the pass. It's 
It's all about working as a Keep communicating, keep working. With Hassan driving. Hassan's assertive guidance was crucial in making sure the red team got all their entrees out successfully with the help of the blue team. Two fish. Good. Okay, let's go. First ticking. Love the teamwork, guys. With a very vocal Hassan. Way to go, Hassan. Chef Ramsey didn't hesitate to give credit where it's due. He called Hassan up front, praising his strong leadership. And Ramsey even said Hassan was the most vocal chef that night and recognized how he guided his team to victory. You're the most vocal, the most confident, and you led your Now. Chef Ramsey was so impressed that he made a bold move. The Red Kitchen. Chef. Both of you, back in line. Yeah, he transferred Hassan to the Red Team. I feel like Chef Ramsey moved him to the Red Team too soon, and things just went downhill from here. It's like his teammates messed up, and Hassan got the blame for it. If Hassan had stayed on the blue team or got another chance, he could have probably won or at least made it to the black jacket. He had a lot of potential, and it felt like he left the competition too early. They like it. I've been doing this for years, and when somebody comes and tells me you're doing stuff wrong. Even though Hassan tried to help during family night service, reminding Danny about two tuna orders, his voice seemed to vanish in the chaos, like nobody even heard him. It was like talking to a wall. How rude is that? But wait, there's more. On their third try, when Hassan's New York strip landed on Ramsey's table, it wasn't cooked properly. Raw for those of you keeping score from home. And that was the last straw for the red team. Chef Ramsey promptly booted them out of the kitchen. All together. The red team's communication breakdown and their cold treatment of Hassan really threw everything off, in my opinion. And let's talk about Danny's attitude for a second. She seriously rubbed me the wrong way throughout the season. Hassan was cool and even tried to patch things up with her, but she seemed to have a chip on her shoulder. With Hassan, to find out what the men are doing and the ladies aren't doing, but do it quick. Chef Ramsey had specifically chosen Hassan to lead the red team, but it seemed like Danny couldn't handle it, right? She had to go and mess things up for one of the top guys that season. Was it because she felt threatened? Now, let's flip the script and talk about how Hassan did on sous chef Andy's big night. This wasn't just any old night, it was Chef Ramsey's close friend's wedding. Chef Ramsey dropped a bomb on Hassan, giving him just five minutes to get the main table's order ready. So, Hassan teamed up with Jared to pull it off, but Ariel was quick to jump in with her criticisms. In time. I need three minutes on the head table! Chef, I mean Hassan is running around with like a chicken with his head cut off and like... Chicken. Hassan hit a rough patch when he served up some pink chicken. The chicken's raw. Oh, so, Chef Ramsey had to lay down the law, giving the red team a serious warning about the consequences of any more slip ups. Honestly, I swear to God, one more mistake and I'm gonna kick you all out. Hassan tried to salvage the situation by recooking the chicken, but unfortunately, it still turned out raw. Chef Ramsey was clearly not impressed. Hassan's attempt to rescue the dish was like watching a high-stakes cooking drama unfold. Despite his efforts, the chicken just wouldn't cooperate, and Chef Ramsay's disappointment was palpable. It's like having a winning lottery ticket in the palm of your hand and then dropping it en route to picking up your prize. Some fans speculate if Hassan hadn't stumbled on such a big night, he could have been a contender for the black jacket. Hassan was definitely no slouch in the kitchen. Compared to some of the other chefs, especially Jackie, he was like a shining star. His performances weren't just good, they were stellar. Back when he was on the blue team, he was practically leading the charge in almost every service. Let's be real here. Serving pink chicken once is bad enough, but doing it twice? And to top it off, it was at the wedding reception of Chef Ramsay's sous chef. That's a major mess up, no matter how skilled you are. So, was Hassan robbed? What's your take on it? Well, I think Hell's Kitchen might have missed Hassan's talents, but he bounced back on Chopped and snagged the runner-up spot. Way to go, Hassan. Some fans reckon Chef Ramsey dropped the ball by moving Hassan to the red team too soon. And his teammates didn't exactly have his back, making his Hell's Kitchen journey a rough ride. They're pretty convinced that if he stuck with the blue team or got another shot, he could have been a contender, maybe even scored a black jacket. But hey, Hassan didn't let that setback define him. He flipped it into a win with his own catering biz, HNR Food Services, and a food truck called the Drunken Rooster. If you're in Detroit, gotta try those tacos and elotes. Now, let's dive into the sixth service of Season 6. So, both teams jumped right into it, grabbing their first orders and diving into making their dishes. 
But then, Andy messes up big time by hearing one scallop order instead of two. And you can imagine what happens next. Cue the blame game. Oh, fuck you now. I'm like, dude, accent, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. Hey, come here, you. Come here. Are you doing this on purpose? No, sir. Blaming Chef Ramsay because you didn't catch an order? Come on, man. His accent isn't that hard to understand. I got it, Chef. How many scallops on there? Two scallops, Chef. Unbelievable. If he could slow it down a little bit, it would help me out a lot. Guys, no. It's brain dead. And then there's Jim, serving up a risotto that all but tore Chef Ramsay's taste buds from his mouth and curb stomped them with its pepper overload. Cue the reprimand session. Peppery! Chef Ramsay, not a fan of the pepper. That's a little pepper. Yeah, it's burning my fuck mouth off. Okay. Come on, Jim! Over in the Red Brigade's corner, things got a bit saucy. Ramsay, never one to hold back, launched into a tirade at Tanil for whipping up an abundance of spinach. His suggestion that she could feed the entire neighborhood didn't exactly land well with her. Tanile fired back, saying, Be a lazy cow! He needs to learn how to show slack, especially when I'm up there working. On the flip side, the Blue Kitchen was cooking up its own drama. Jim's second attempt at the dish fell short, resulting in a flavor as exciting as soggy cardboard. Chef Ramsay, in his usual not-so-subtle style, beckoned the blue team to taste their teammates' creation. Hey, fuck face! Taste that! Have a look at the shit you're sending! That was just... Over in the red kitchen, the ladies were almost ready with their appetizers when Chef Ramsay called for mashed potatoes from Tanil. But things took a turn for the worse as the potatoes stubbornly stuck to the pot, leaving an inadequate portion for two servings. Off, yeah. Tanil, remembering the earlier mishap of serving too much, expressed her concerns about making the same error again. Up to the past is too much. Chef Ramsay accused her of treating the situation lightly, despite her apparent genuine concerns. Act for you. Let me just tell you something. You act pathetically. As tensions peaked, Tanil couldn't hold back her frustration any longer. She fired back at Chef Ramsay, matching his derogatory remarks with her own. The shock was palpable among her teammates as the exchange escalated rapidly. Chef Ramsay, offended by Tanil's retort, wasted no time in ejecting her from the kitchen. Tempers flared further as the heated confrontation spilled into the back hallway. Busting my ass! You're and you lying. know I am! Let me do my you dare turn around and tell me that I'm fucking crap. You know I'm or you my fuck ass. off through those doors. You right. can dish it, but you can't that take it. Hey, madam. Ah, that moment will definitely be etched in Hell's Kitchen history forever. But let's get back to the red kitchen. Frustrated, Tanil ordered her teammates to clear her station, clearly not in the mood for any distractions. Meanwhile, over in the blue kitchen, Chef Ramsay once again turned his attention to Jim in pursuit of that elusive perfect risotto. His third try didn't quite hit the mark, and you could see Chef Ramsay's frustration mounting. Jim, that's where I draw the line. Scott. Yes, yeah, Chef, right now. Chef Scott. To add to Chef Ramsay's growing impatience, the blue team was moving at a snail's pace, stuck at their first table. It took a whopping hour and 15 minutes into service, with a nudge from sous chef Scott, before they finally got their appetizers out. As the red team delved into preparing their main courses, Chef Ramsay's request for chicken sparked a snag. It already went up! I put that up first, Chef! Sabrina boldly insisted that she had already sent it out, but to everyone's dismay, the chicken was nowhere to be found on the hot plate or at any diner's table. Okay, well it's not here then! Will somebody help me then! I don't have another what do you one! Think no, Chef! But Sabrina was unbothered. Oh, yes, yes, Chef! It's like I need a detective in here. Where's the chicken? In the blue corner, the men kicked off their entrees. But sous chef Scott was quick to notice that Dave had veered off course in the garnish department. Hey, you don't even know what you're doing because you're cooking something we don't fucking need. With his characteristic urgency, Chef Ramsay urged Dave to snap out of it and get back on track. You wake up. Yes, yeah, chef. Now, I hope you're keeping tabs. Kevin took charge of the entrees in the blue kitchen, stepping into the spotlight. However, his leadership triggered a minor disagreement with Dave, centered around the precise timing for the garnishes. However, the outcome left much to be desired, as the chicken ended up being poorly carved. Chicken properly, yeah? Oh, really? Tell me things anymore. Yes, chef. Don't butcher it. Yes, chef. And use a knife because you're carving chicken. Yes, chef. It looks like a dog's dinner. Over in the blue kitchen, Chef Ramsay wasted no time in calling out the next order, pushing the team into action. But Andy, well, he seemed to have drifted off again, oblivious to what was happening, much to Kevin's frustration. You hear that, Andy? You need to pay attention. I can't wait for you. One halibut, yes? Yes, Chef. Chef Ramsay's disappointment hit its peak as it became clear that Andy was about to prepare two halibut portions instead of just one, as required. How many halibut? Two halibut. Oh, God. He can't count to fucking two. Did you go to school? I and yet, he kept up that cocky act of his. To learn to count. I think you can go learn that if you like. Right behind you. 
Andy's halibut came out undercooked, and Chef Ramsay was not happy about it. Kevin was on the verge of losing it too. Separate it, it's raw. Yes. Raw! Raw! Get it back in the oven! Yeah. Andy's just... Man, Andy was just a mess. While the blue team twiddled their thumbs for a good 15 minutes, waiting on Andy's halibut, the red team was on fire, serving up their dishes like clockwork. But just when things were going smoothly, guess who decided to show up again at the hot plate? Hey ladies, all of you, come here a minute. I'm fed up with that, that raw pork. Yikes, raw pork, not exactly what you want to see on your plate, huh? Suzanne, being the sharp cookie she is, knew serving up undercooked pork could spell disaster for the diner's health in more ways than one. Raw, raw pork. You can't send out raw pork. It will make you seriously ill. Give me a fucking answer. Me. But Chef Ramsay delivered a stern rebuke, chastising Sabrina for the error that could potentially jeopardize the diner's health. Yeah, was it? Oh, oh. It's me! Hey, hey, just touch that! Yes, yeah, Chef. Yeah. <sighs> Sorry, Chef. That's my Serving up raw pork is a surefire way to get kicked out of the kitchen pronto. And as if that wasn't enough, Andy's halibut saga continued with yet another overcooked disaster in the blue kitchen. Guy just couldn't catch a break, could he? Like a fucking bullet! Fire some more, Chef. Andy's not getting the shit right. It was really getting- Chef Ramsay wasn't pulling any punches, that's for sure. Kevin tried to step in and help out, but Andy waved off his offer like it was no big deal. Dude, give me a- Know what I'm doing. And to make matters worse, the halibut Andy finally served up was still raw in the middle, pushing Dave to vent his frustration about Andy's sluggishness, which was spot on, really. I gotta slow down, I'm sorry. Come on. Let's go- Dragging the whole service down for the team. This is fucking dire. I'm in the weeds, guys. Meanwhile, in the red kitchen, another hiccup occurred as a raw lamb dish resurfaced. Sabrina tried to deflect blame by insisting it had been sent out as medium well, but Chef Ramsay quickly called her out for trying to shift responsibility onto the customers. Well, we're arguing the customers wrong. No, Chef. Raw pork, cooked lamb. Now you're blaming the customer. No, Chef. Come here. Yes, Chef. I'm Ejection! I was hoping for it. Things were getting super tense as Chef Ramsay got more and more fed up. He basically told off Sabrina for trying to pass the blame onto someone else and Andy for still messing up in the kitchen. Chef Ramsay had had enough. He was so fed up with all the mistakes that he just called it quits. Telling both kitchens to stop cooking and ending the chaotic service then and there. You fuck off, will you? The chef. Well, of course, the blue kitchen tanked all because of Andy. Screw your team! Yes, I am, Chef. Andy couldn't get his temperatures right. And then the red team sank because of Sabrina. But let's see who gets the boot. Sabrina. Can you believe it? Jim didn't even get nominated to leave, and yet he was the one sent packing. It's just unbelievable. I mean, sure, his service wasn't perfect, but compared to Andy and Sabrina, who were total disasters that night, it just doesn't make sense. Chef Ramsay said Jim lacked passion, but come on, I think he was just more laid back, you know? It's like this dead mob's inside. Show some of them, will you? Or piss off. Just because he wasn't yelling doesn't mean he lacked passion. Introverts deserve justice, too. Remember what the season's winner said this? Just slice through it, will you? Yes, yeah? Chef. Grab your towel. Yeah. Also, remember when he mentioned he wouldn't change who he was for any job on his way out? At first, I thought he meant Chef Ramsay's aggressive kitchen style, but now, I'm thinking maybe it was about the producers or directors pulling the strings. Apparently, he was eliminated because he refused to start a feud with Robert or Kevin. Yeah, that's the consensus among the HK community. If that's the case, proud of you, my man. Jim, you were funny as hell, and I was definitely rooting for you. Playing against us, Jimmy gets him again, bang, but she ain't coming, pop, pop. <laughs> so, that's a wrap on today's video. But if you can think of more chefs who were treated unfairly on the show, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications. Also, if you thought this video was crazy, then make sure to check the next post right here. It's even better.